like um, instant karma, like, or not instant karma, but like new karma, because, um, you know, I, I feel like that happens a lot too, in terms of people just creating new karma and, and, you know, forming, say, relationships with someone who they really have no connection with, but they meet them and they create this karma and then they're married. I, I want to find out from you, if they don't have a karmic connection, how does a marriage with someone you don't have a karmic connection actually even last if it's new karma? Oh, you know, the Buddha actually said that um, he compared the marriage with a lotus, uh, which is quite a high symbol. <laughs> but yeah. I think he, you could take any flower in this context. But um, uh, the Buddha, he said that if you have a flower, then you need to have, um, uh, you need to have the right uh, soil for it to, to come from, right, to grow from. And you need to give it the right water, you know, the right sunshine, the right conditions. So uh, the same way, um, if we have had done a lot of good deeds together in a previous life, then in this life, it's easy to be friends or to have a relationship. But if we, in the present life, do not continue with that, do not add anything to that. We do not help each other out. We do not <laughs> sacrifice anything for one another. Then, then you are not able to, to, to let that uh, flower grow. So even for somebody known for his rather ascetic uh, perspective on life, the Buddha, <laughs> he actually made a, quite a romantic statement about the <laughs> about the um, relationship. So he did say that if we have a flower, uh, you need to have the right conditions for it to, f to flourish, to, to, to grow. So um, uh, it's not only about the soil. Mm. So when you are asking uh, if we have no, if, if we two people meet for the first time and they have had not, no, not just connection whatsoever, you never have any relationship together. Uh, in a previous life, will you be able to have a good relationship in the present life? Yes, it's possible. Everything is important what we do right now. But um, um, everything, the karma that we do, it's always important that we do good together as well. Um, so we, when, when people do good together, it's easy for them to 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 there is a certain strength of karma in there that you, when you do something good together, when you give, uh, for example, or when you meditate together, there's a lot of strength in that. Is that answering your question or is that a completely different topic? Yeah, no, I guess it does. I, I guess it's, uh, you know, I always find it very interesting that people aren't karmically linked. To me, it just seems like a, that relationship isn't really going to go anywhere because you don't have that karmic connection. oh okay but you know yeah. i guess it's like what you said it, it doesn't really it's like what you do together now um that really makes yeah there is there is um there's a mis widespread misunderstanding that when people uh cheat on each other that there always must be a problem in that relationship this is actually not confirmed by science. It's, it's not always like that. Sometimes people cheat on each other, even when they have a good relationship. Sometimes it's just a habit that people simply are not able to, to, to they, they, they do regret things that they're going to regret later. So it's not only about, um, yeah, if, they, if, if people make such a mistake, they're going to regret later. They have to reflect on themselves. And why do I make that mistake? Is it because I'm saying, if you're the other? There's always another. Sorry, <laughs> there's a saying: if you're the other, there's always another. <laughs> That's horrible. But it's Sorry? true. It's basically what he's saying. He's saying that <laughs> people don't cheat because they have. If you're the other, there's always another. <laughs> hmm. It means that even if they leave the, basically what it's saying is, I think it's kind of what you're saying, 
if somebody's with somebody and they begin cheating, right? They go out to this next person, the same thing, the same issues or whatever, the yeah. same reason that they were cheating has and wasn't the relationship, goes to the next. So now this person they're with for a little bit, now they begin cheating on this person. Yes. And that person and that. yes. That's, so that's the other, there's always another, they're always going to be. There's, that's true. It, it is a certain problem that we human beings tend to always think that the grass of our neighbors is more greener than our own grass. Is that, is that a proverb? Is that yeah. a thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some sayings that we have in English and in Dutch, and sometimes we don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sometimes I'm saying this saying in, or this proverb in Dutch language, and then, then everyone is looking at me like, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that, that is actually a very um, important part of uh, that we often think we, 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 we do not understand that what we have is actually more valuable very often, or at least just as valuable as the things we do not have. But the very nature of, of greed is that we tend to uh, underappreciate, not appreciate the things we have. So that's why I, the Buddha, he said that uh, contentment is the greatest wealth. Because when you really understand what you really have, then that, that's a lot more valuable than, than looking for more. So, but contentment doesn't sound like a very good marriage advice, right? It sounds very old fashioned and conservative, but contentment is something you can learn by simply allowing your mind to, to be more in the present. Because a lot of, the problems when we are greedy with something or, for, or someone is that we are not able to stay in the present moment and just be happy with what is here and now. Mm -hmm. on, on the other of the yes. 